Welcome to Agent Tactics every Friday at 10 a.m. Central. My guest today is somebody I absolutely adore that's in my market and doing everything the right way uh, or how it looks on Instagram and YouTube. But I can say that somebody who's in my market, in my backyard, is starting to take business away from me using YouTube and Instagram. Well, mainly YouTube um, uh, because we I'm big on YouTube and now she's like really getting the YouTube space. So I'm excited for her on that. So I want to, uh, the one thing I always hear people say, I don't want to get on YouTube. Or I don't want to get this because uh, there's an agent that does it really big in my market. And I really want to show today is that it doesn't take a ton of subscribers to get business on YouTube. And it doesn't take a huge following on Instagram, even though Shannon's got 10,000, over 10,000 uh, followers on IG. So my guest today, Shannon Mangin out of Lakeway area in Austin, Texas. Shannon, welcome. Hey, Jeremy. Thanks for having me on. I, I really enjoy, uh, I mean, just uh, fluff your ego a little bit. Mm -hmm. I feel like you always do a really good job of creating a nice balance between informative, educational, smart, and funny, right? You're able to incorporate those like real four things and you're creating in uh, your Instagram and on YouTube. And I feel like that really does drive your ideal avatar towards you and it really does drive engagement so walk us through a little bit how you approach your instagram and what's working there and then i want to get into youtube sure so i i can start off on like where i started with instagram real briefly and and kind of what made the change for it so i started posting on instagram and trying to do video back in 2020 where a lot of people started when everything shut down and I had no clue what I was doing. So I was looking at what other agents in the area were doing. And it was like the just sold, just put, you know, just listed that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, I got on Canva, started putting out these little things, um, tried to do some video and it was not working. It was like, I felt like I had to be more serious and kind of like ultra professionals. So I was putting out market updates and stuff that were not really my personality and they were coming off like, you know, I was getting views and stuff and people from like family friends going, oh, cool, you're on video, that you like, nice. But they were not turning into leads or anything like that. Um, so I eventually hired a local, it was like a local blogger influencer that was offering Instagram audits. And I just paid her a good chunk of money. And I was like, could you audit my account? And I wanted to know if you were just an Austin homeowner that found my page, would you hire me to be your real estate agent? And so she looked at my account and I paid her a good chunk of change. And she's like, nope, I would not hire you. <laughs> and so I was like, well, why? Like what, you know, I wanted to see from an outsider's perspective, not a fellow realtor, because I feel like real, real estate coaches kind of tell you different things. I was like, why would you not hire me? And so her biggest takeaway, she's like, well, um, you're very self-centered which kind of hurt and stung, but she's like, your page is all about you. Like, I just did this. I just sold that. I got another client. I did this. And, and looking at it, I was like, oh gosh, you're right. Like, it's all like an all about me type thing. And she's like, who is your client? Who is this page for? And it was like a simple question, but it felt like I kind of got punched in the face. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like I, I just made the page because I know I was supposed to be advertising myself on Instagram. And she's like, your page should be all about your client. So that was like the biggest thing was, okay, who is my target audience? And she talked about really narrowing it down to a specific niche. She's like, this, the more specific you can go, the better. Instead of like, I'm all things for everyone, you're not going to attract a lot of people. But if you can kind of narrow it down a little bit, you're going to attract the right person. So for me, for Instagram, I'm really trying to target a move up buyer. So my ideal, like my avatar is someone that's between the age of like 35 to 45. They're moving out to either Lake Travis, Dripping Springs because they have kids. They're moving out there because of the school district. They're not first time buyers so much because most of them are in that price point of like 700,000 up to a million or so. So they've got some experience owning a home, whatever. And I'm trying to guide them on like how to sell and buy or how to move up or, you know, those types of things. Um, and so I like that was probably like the biggest thing was just realizing I needed to narrow down my audience and create content aimed at that person. Like what would that buyer need to know? 
And the way it helped me was beforehand, like I would just copy what I saw other agents doing. So I've, I follow like Katie Day, she's in Texas. So she would put out like educational stuff. And I'm like, oh, I can talk about that. I can talk about that. But a lot of it was maybe aimed at like first time buyers or like, you know, like stuff that's maybe not in the right price point for where I'm at or doesn't exactly fit, you know, the area that I'm in. And, and so now I just really kind of put those lenses on of like, what are these clients looking for? What are the big questions they have? And those are the topics I pick when I'm creating any video. It's with that person in mind. So let's, let's start there. So uh, I love that because this is the big thing, I think, especially on YouTube that, you know, I, I had to just start to define my audience. My YouTube channel wasn't working because I wasn't defining my audience. And I literally just had this conversation with uh, Lindsay Johnson out of Gainesville yesterday. She called me. I was like, I need help on my YouTube channel. She's got, I got 1500 subscribers, but I'm not getting business out of it. And so we looked at her channel and it was like, well, who, who, who's watching you? Right. So um, I love, and I love that, like, you know, you're at 380 something subscribers on YouTube and now you're getting business out of a couple of videos. So I want to go that direction in a minute, but let's talk about defining our audience. Um, all right. So in here, who wants a move up buyer? Uh, drop a one in the, in the chat. If you're looking for move up buyers, like that's who you want. Um, Cause I want to go about how you define this person and how you start making content for these people. So um I, I, so for you, I want to be, I want Lakeway Dripping Springs buyers above 750, but these are people that are going to be selling their homes and buying maybe a 3,000, 3,500 square foot home. How did you start creating? And as you start talking, I'm going to pull up your Instagram. How did you start defining that person and start making content for them? So my, uh, one of the coach that I was working with, she's like, think of who your best client was ever. Like if you were just like, man, I wish I could have a million of those clients. And it was a family that lived in my neighborhood, which I farm. I do postcards and stuff in the neighborhood I used to live in. And, um, and, I, and they bought, they sold their home it was beautiful, you know, newer home did really well. And then they bought a bigger home, like with an acre of land. So I was like a double ended deal. And I was just like, man, if I can get like 50 clients like that every year, just right in my own area and just, you know, that's what I would want. So I started thinking about all the things that they asked me, what were all their fears? What were all their frustrations? And for them, it was like, okay, how do I, a lot of it was the transition, the timing of it. Like, I don't want to move twice. How do I sell without, you know, and get into another home without being homeless in the middle? Can I really afford to upsize? Like I want to upsize my home, but I don't want to upsize my mortgage payment. Um, how, you know, what are the options for me? What if I have to buy before I sell? Like, how does, what does that look like? Where do I go? And then the other thing is like, where am I going to go? Like, where can I get a good deal or, you know, like a newer home or whatever, um, you know, where, like, where are some good communities and, and things like that? So I just started focusing on those types of questions. Um, and it definitely helped. And then I, I would also like tag the locations as well. I don't think hashtags work as much for a while. I was getting good business in my, um, neighborhood with like using HOA hashtags and like very specific ones, but I always like put a geo tag of where I'm at because sometimes neighbors would discover me. They're like, yeah, I see you pop up on Instagram and it's because they're looking at like the community page or whatever. So I, I do try to use like some local little tags there. Um, and then I also just made it an effort to get every single person I know to follow me on, on Instagram. So like, even if I meet people at an open house and they're like asking questions and stuff, they don't really have an agent. I'm like, Hey, are you on Instagram by chance? Like I just did a video about this. Let me share this with you. And I can send them a link or get their text message, send it to them. Um, same for YouTube now, but you know, it's, it's like, try it. You have to kind of proactively work to grow the audience um, but just putting out stuff about what they would be asking is huge. Um, and then the other thing is I made the shift of, instead of saying the just sold, just listed, that was her, the other big takeaway. She's like, it's very self-centered. Like my page was, and I was like, oh my God, I'm not a self-centered person. It kind of hurt, but she's like, you need to make it about them, like about their story. And so instead of saying like, just sold, just listed, I might do something like this, like the one you're showing right here. It's kind of giving them the facts about the market and, um, and, and helpful advice. You know, like people are saying it's a bad time to sell, but here's advice on like what's working. And, but I also do a lot of like client stories where, 
like the one here, you got the house. I'm kind of telling the story. It's actually me recording the the conversation where I'm telling them that their offer was accepted. And, um, you know, and, and just kind of telling the client's story, it's more hu like humanizing. It, it makes it more emotional and like where people are like, oh, that's so cool. And, and just kind of telling their journey instead of, I could have just been under contract with a little like realtor headshot with my arms crossed and just like a picture of a house that doesn't mean a whole lot. But if someone hears like this client's story and they can hear the joy in their voice and, and like, you know, it makes it more relatable and you'll get their friends and family following me. I'll, I'll pick up like, you know, I, I get a lot of agent referrals from Instagram because they're like, we see that you're busy and like you take good care of your clients. Um, you know, so it like that, I would say is probably a biggest tip. If you can, I'm not saying it's like wrong to ever say just sold, just listed, but as much as possible, tell the story of it, tell the human, like the human side of it, of who these clients were and how you helped them. Um, and for clients that don't want to be on camera, they don't want to be videotaped. You can still tell the story of like, you won't believe the deal my client just got and, you know, show pictures of the house they got. Um, that's been huge. What about these sliding into oh. your DMs? So I do, I do love um, working with some trends. I don't always follow like every trend, but I think they're fun. And so I will probably spend like 15 minutes a week um, on my phone. I do one brainstorm session for the month where I just sit down for maybe like, uh, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. And I brainstorm all the content I want to do for like 30 days out on both Instagram and for YouTube. But I put a timer on my phone so I don't end up like doom scrolling just for hours <laughs> or binge oh, watching. Um, I so that. I put a little timer for like 15 minutes. If you have an iPhone, you can set a timer on Instagram like to, to say, hey, it's been 15 minutes. You need a break. And I just give myself that time to like scroll through the Explorer page. And I'm just trying to save anything that I think is funny or that I'm like, that's a cool idea, a cool transition or whatever. And I just save it. And then after I've spent 15 minutes, I go to a sheet of paper and I just like brainstorm everything out. Like I could do this, 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 this. Um, and then I circle the ones that I think are the easiest ideas to knock out first. Um, and then I will usually schedule like the next day is just like a film day in the morning. And so I will just get up and I have my huge list and I just start knocking out, you know, a bunch of videos as much as possible. Um, and then I will fill in others, you know, cause I, a lot of my stuff is about what's happening now. So like all of a sudden I might get inspiration for something funny during the week and I'm like, Oh, I can shoot that. Sometimes I will just shoot it then. Um, but I, yeah, I, I just like, that was a, a trend I saw people doing where the ball never hit them. And since rates dropped, I was like, okay, I'm actually going to make it where I got hit by the ball. Cause, um, I don't know. It's just, I, like I said, I, I just save stuff if I think it's funny and I might have a use for it. And then I go back and I can like pick from some of those ideas. How about editing these? Right. Cause I know everybody's looking at these and these are, you know, they require a little bit of edits, right? You got to pull in the beginning of this. Yeah. Uh, then you got to shoot this and do this. And then you got to get hit in the head, obviously. Mm -hmm. But some of these like the sliding in to the DMS, right? How are you going through and editing these? Cause I know that's a question that Tom has. Yeah, it's just, I'm using CapCut for the most part. So um, on those, like if I find one of those trends, um, I can't remember, I think it's called stitching or something like that, but you can, you can go into Instagram. I have to find one now to look at it, but you can hit like the three dots on this other person's video. And there's a, a section that's, I think it's stitch. And so basically it will take that video clip and make it the beginning of your Instagram reel. It'll like open up and make a new reel. You trim off the the rest of that other person's video and then you add your own at the end. Ah, so see, that's smart. I didn't know. Here, let me share. I don't know if it'll let me do this because it's on desktop, but let's yeah. see. this one, you go here to the top. Uh, let me yeah. see. Oh, I can see if it does it online. I'm not sure. Um, but you're saying you just click these top three buttons. It might not do it on the. Yeah, I would, I would have to go back and play with it. And if, and if I 
can, um, I don't know, if you post a, a replay or something, I can also add the, or like a, a email link with the replay. I can also put the directions on there, but that's how I figured it out. was just like, I, I asked, I actually asked a couple of people, I was like, how do you, how are you making these things? Cause I saw them all trending. It's like the epic fail video clip. And then you slide into the, like the next piece of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just like I said, find, find one you like, and then you can usually, you know, I just add your own piece at the end of it. Um, and I use cap cut for the second piece of it. I've learned cap cut over the years is I'm actually doing a session next week on Tuesday. I have a, a, a webinar called Instagram for normal people. And this coming Tuesday, I have Ian Williams on there and we're going to do cap cut edits that are like a little more advanced. He did a beginner one like a few months back. Yeah. Um, we're going to do another one to kind of show like, how do you do some of the more that look fancy, but they're not that difficult, like some of the transitions and things like that to help. That actually gives me, so, um, in a second, if you don't mind putting that into the, uh, comment section, that way people yeah. can sign up for it. But, um, I have, so for everyone that's on here, um, why is this going? So I have a stand store. I'll put the link here in a second. So it's all the past. Um, videos that we've done with the playbooks. So literally a playbook. So what she's talking about here will be into a playbook. Um, so all the old playbooks are here. And then I have this thing called Flowdesk. And so if you want to sign up for the upcoming events, you can sign up here. But all the old agent tactic videos that we've done are right in here. And so Ian actually did one of these videos with us. And this just takes you to my YouTube uh, channel where all of this is. Um, Ian did this, so I'll toss the link in here in a second. So if you ever want to come on here and find all the old videos, um, we have them all here and there's a few videos about real broker on here. I don't try to make that a thing. Um, but this is like kind of the only space I can drop my real broker videos on. So, uh, it's definitely not like a sales pitch, uh, uh YouTube channel really try not to make it be so, um, yeah. So share that link. Uh, oh, you got it right there. So sign up for that. And then I'll toss my other links in there in a minute. Okay. So using CapCut, you're, you're looking for stuff that's sometimes trending and you're focusing on information that helps uh, your clients. What about like property tours or anything like that? Because we've had Ksenia on and other people that have done property tours. How are you highlighting on Instagram um, properties or neighborhoods that's getting business? Honestly, those don't get as much attention for me. What's working. I feel like, I feel like every person you need to find your thing of what works. Like there's people that do nothing but property tours like Tyler Hassman and they were like crushing it. Um, you, Jeremy do like a lot of the news stuff, like reacting to the news and stuff. And I mean, you do awesome with that. Um, for me, I started off like my background was a teacher. And so I like like short, simple educational pieces, I like to bring humor into it because when I was teaching fourth graders, like you need, like they need to have like a reason to feel, <laughs> to be excited about what you're teaching. And so I always try to make my classroom fun. So I'm always trying to look at like, what's like a simple thing I can share. And my goal is to either educate, inspire, or entertain. Those are like my three buckets. So educational could be, you know, telling someone about like, you know, interest rates, what's happening in the, the market right now. Inspirational to me are the just sold, just listed, replacing them with client stories. Like, look what this family just got. Oh my gosh, look at what they bought over here. Look at this. Um, and then the entertaining is just some of the funnier trends, like me getting hit in the head with a ball. I mean, it was still educational, but it's like, that's where I might pull in like a lip sync thing or whatever, if I think it's funny. Um, usually my funnier stuff, that's kind of funny educational are the ones that do the best, but I will say for like property tours, I don't, I, I, anytime I have a listing, I will take the long form listing. I do a full listing video that goes on a separate YouTube channel, but I will make a short form version of it. Just like, you know, like the one where I was like sliding in and then it showed the house. That was one of my listing videos. Um, I just did one where it's like a spoof. It's the last one I posted where it's like Matthew McConaughey's coming out of a car mm -hmm. And then he looks at me and then he, and, it, and it's like from the scene of, um, how to lose a guy in 10 days. <laughs> um, so I replaced, I was like in place of where Kate Hudson would have been, but it's like, it's like my client's face when they see a new construction home. And, and then I'm in the caption, um, I'm showcasing the, the, yeah. So I have the whole intro of where he comes in there and stuff, but it's like, I'm highlighting, this is a new construction community 
that I, you know, sell a lot in. And so I, I was just trying to kind of make a funny way of like how to showcase like what my clients are buying. So those get a lot of views. It's more like the feeling of finding a new home in the hill country. I sell a lot of new construction. I'm passionate about it. So I do a lot of stuff of like, you know, how it feels, what it looks like, how excited my clients are. And then I try to showcase like the views in the back or I don't know, just, just fun things like that. Um, I'm not doing like full blown property tours cause I try to keep it like very short and simple, um, for Instagram, but I, that's how I would say I'm, I'm doing property tours. Okay. Yeah. I like this one a lot. This is, I mean, Matthew McConaughey, obviously <laughs> he's already an attention getter. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Okay. Everyone's like, <gasps> I, I saw this and immediately wanted to spoof it with me. Like like being shocked that he was at my house and be like, yeah. Oh, it's Matthew McConaughey. Like, and then yeah. he calling me beautiful and not the house beautiful, but that was my yeah. own ego. So, and, and I, so people are like, how do you come up with that idea? I totally ripped it off. This is when I was scrolling through, like I said, I spent about 15 minutes and I scroll. So there was a sushi restaurant that I totally ripped this off from. And I don't even know their names, but they did the whole thing. Like Matthew coming out of the car and it's the waitress, like holding this giant plate of sushi. And he's just like leaning in like, Oh wow. And then it like leans in on the sushi and whatever. And I was just like, that is ridiculous. But that's also like funny. And I was like, okay, and I don't sell sushi. I sell Hill Country Views. Like that's what I'm going to do is just, you know, as I steal a lot of ideas from non-real estate accounts. And um, I, I feel like that kind of helps me stay like more fresh and creative with what I'm doing. But all of the stuff people are like, oh my God, you're so creative. I probably ripped off the idea from some other account that I saw that probably ripped it off from someone else. So I'm like, I, it's hard to find like totally original stuff on Instagram, but yeah, get inspiration from others and then, you know, change it up for your own. I love it. Uh, how hard is, I'm, is a general question to everybody. How hard do you think it is to create this content after listening to how she did it? Just going through hitting the stitch button. Tom, are you, are you still analysis by paralysis? Have we, have we got off the fence yet? A little bit yeah no i'm i'm doing stuff instagram i do more um and yeah i finally done some youtube stuff but and like yeah. for, for that one i oh, sometimes i do just i all i did was i googled because i that one was like complicated because it's him and like going back and forth between him and me see the stitch thing doesn't exactly work on that but I just went and found that clip i just googled you know how to lose a guy in 10 days yellow dress scene I found it on YouTube and I used my screen recorder on here on my phone to just screen record it. Then I had that little clip, I put it into cap cut and I like resized it. And then I just, I just split it out. So I was just like, I only need the few little sections of his face. Then I had just me, you know, this is like a, a new construction home, two doors down from me. I live in a new construction community. So I, I film a lot of stuff just in my neighborhood. Um, and my husband helped me film some of that. A lot of the stuff I filmed by myself with just a tripod or like a ring light. Um, and then I just went back and I snipped it together. And so like the editing part didn't take that long. Probably the, you know, the hardest thing is just finding the scene from the movie and recording it. Um, but other than that, it's just like splitting the little clips together. And I, like I said, so practice, but it, I've gotten faster over the years. Two questions. Number one, um, your husband knows about you and Matthew. Yeah, I also have one with Tom Cruise. I throw in a, I have a lot of A-list um, celebrities. Usher. I, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so the cap cut that you're editing on is that on your phone or is that desktop? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I, I do everything on my phone. It's the easiest. Um, and and like I said, you know, it's it's just just like it's. It, it's like you, it, the first time you do a skill, you're just like, oh my God, this took forever. But then once you figure it out, you're like, oh, okay, that's all I have to do. And it's simple enough. Um, and, and so I, like, I, like I said, I've just learned over the years, or sometimes I'll see someone that did something cool, maybe another agent or even like a, just another creator. And I'm just like, that is the coolest video. How did you do this? I'll just ask people. And then they're like, oh, you do this or that. And I'm like, okay, that's super simple. So um, I Google a lot of stuff, like how do I remove a background on CapCut? How do I do this? How do I do that? And I just kind of learn, I've kind of taught myself, but, um, 
but a lot of these skills are not that hard. And so if you want to learn more, definitely come Tuesday because we're going to be breaking down some of these things that look crazy complicated, but they're they're not once you understand. I'm registered. Awesome. Yeah, we have and I have that video up with uh I did I put it in a link? I didn't put it in the link in. Um Ian taught a class a while ago. So I have the old video if you want to watch that as well. I I am going to try to go to your what time is the it's on Tuesday, right? Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central. Oh, that's new. I'll have it recorded. Okay. Yeah. I'm 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 gonna be in uh Fort Lauderdale um oh. for for an event I got invited to like super last minute. Um, okay. So what are the, before we move into YouTube, because I'm dying to know how she's getting, cause she's, we talked about this the other day. She, she changed up her content a little bit, right? And I had this problem too. I was creating content that wasn't getting business and it took a small tweak and I started getting business. So I want to really talk about the small tweaks that she made on a couple of videos. That's like getting her a lot of really good business. We're talking, hundred thousand dollars already in business, right? Yeah. In a very short amount of time. And then plus not even the ones that are coming up. So I'm excited to talk about that. But uh, real quick, what are the questions we have about Instagram before we get into YouTube? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. I have a quick, I have a real quick question. Yep. Sure. Trouble balancing, not wanting to have just listed and needing to advertise for my seller. So they get upset if they don't see their listing online, on like in social media. So do you have any suggestions for that? How to incorporate more? Yeah, so I, I think it's okay. I mean, it, I'm not saying like to never ever do you know just listed i i learned this from chris benjamin like if you have if you took some beautiful home photos or whatever i see nothing wrong with like posting those in there definitely brand it so people don't just see ho house photos i always feel like you have to put your face or brand somewhere on there so if you're if you want to showcase a beautiful home photo you know you can put that in there but i i mean i let my sellers know is the expectation i have like a listing launch plan i'm not going to be putting their house like every single week that's not how my instagram works that's not the purpose for it so i will you know usually do like their photos or one reel that kind of you know um highlights it like i said it's like the one where i was like sliding in or something something kind of funny or whatever to get it launched but i'm that's not the purpose of my instagram it's like i we market on we have you know other avenues, other platforms that we advertise their listings, but just kind of set those expectations. Like, you know, we will, we'll, we'll do like whatever you can do. Like we're going to do one, like a reel at the beginning, we will put your photos on there, go in your stories, maybe do some stuff like, Hey, I'm doing an open house out here or whatever. Um, but I don't like, I don't really want my grid full of house pictures. It's not, it's not like really helping them sell. Um, and, and so most of them, like, as long as they know what I'm doing and like tag them in it, whenever you post about it, if you're doing an open house, tag them, like, just let them know, like, Hey, I'm out here or whatever, but you can do a lot of stuff also in the stories. I do think if a house needs to get relaunched, like, let's say you did a big price cut, it set for a while, you can go back and maybe do another reel, like, Hey, take a second look, you know, and, and like show something amazing about the home again, if it's one that's lingering, but um, I just kind of set those expectations that Instagram's not necessarily for selling their home. It's going to get them a lot of, you know, extra exposure and publicity, but it, we don't, you know, we don't do that cadence of like all the time. One, one thing you can do, and I have that problem too. I have clients yeah. that want all of their stuff on YouTube and Instagram. So we'll create, um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna let me go. Um, so we create landing pages from our lofty website and we put the YouTube videos in there. And we can actually run ads through Lofty. Yep. Um, and so that's where I show clients like, hey, look, here's one that we ran ads on. It had this many views. So um, I don't like to run ads on stuff. I'm not a big paid guy. But um, when you show clients like, hey, look, we had this one that we did a landing page for. It got all of these views. And then it takes them away from having to be your whole feed being about their house. Right. Because right. realistically, we, you don't want your whole feed to be their house. Um what other questions do we got before we uh, jump I over? I have a question. Go for the, it. The clients that you get through Instagram, are they people that you don't know? Like they they reach out to you because they see that you're posting things from the neighborhood? 
It's a combination. So I, I, I would say the bulk of my stuff has been agent referrals usually, um, especially because I, like I said, I, at one point um, I was on a Jason Pantana podcast and all of a sudden I got like a whole bunch of followers that a lot of them are agents. So I, I do get agent referrals, which I'm very happy because a lot of times those are more legit, like serious buyers. Um, and so I will get a lot of agents DMing me and I feel like my shift from just doing the, you know, like just listed, just sold, but telling client stories has made a big difference because a lot of them are like, I know you take good care of your clients. I would love for you to help my client or, or whatever. Um, I do get random people. I don't know, um, that just follow me. Sometimes they're like wanting to sell or buy. Sometimes they are in my local market. Um, and then I, a lot of it is also just staying top of mind with past clients in sphere, because I make sure all my friends and like past clients follow me as well. So if I'm posting stuff, all of a sudden I will get people that are like, you know what? Hey, um, I, I heard this about like the market, like one reached out the other day. My friend was telling me that the Austin's going to start crashing next year and they're this and that. And I was like, okay, let's do uh, equity update. Let's, let's like meet and stuff, but they're, they're messaging me because of what I'm posting. Um, and I would say the bulk of my business is not from the post, like the, you know, yeah, those, you know, people see it and it's funny, but it's stories like posting in your stories, putting polls in the stories and where people are voting on them. And then I make sure like I go back and I message the people that have voted and it could be like, you know, not necessarily, do you want to buy a house? Do you want to buy a house? Like I don't do tons of salesy stuff like that, but it like, I've been over my stories in the last five months, I've been building a pool. So people are asking me about that. And even like clients like, Hey, what do you think of your pool builder? What would you do, you know, different? And so I, so like I posted this yesterday, our pool's finally like up and running. We got it all working. Um, and then I'm like, would you like some pool company recommendations? So one of my friends that I, I mean, she's not a client of mine. She already owns a home, but she's just like, yeah, we'd like some pool recommendations. I need to check it again to see if more people are there, but I'm just starting little conversations that could easily lead to, okay, would you also like to know what your home's worth? Would you like to know like how much it would be worth if you put the pool in, you know, so I can, I can also get myself in a real estate conversation from the people that are like, yeah, I'd like to know your recommendations. Um, and then I also talked about like contractors. Cause the next thing is we got to do a, a landscaping project. So I'm like, do you want my preferred list of contractors? So we have like plumbers and electricians and whatever. So a lot of times I'm just putting out like helpful stuff. Um, it could be silly stuff about my dogs or cats or whatever, and like asking a pet question, but it just keeps people engaged. And I would say like, that's where I get most interaction is in stories. So I make it a goal to post every day in stories I'm not posting every day on my feed this last couple of weeks. I've, I've been <laughs> a little busy and kind of off track a bit, but I think I've posted at least one reel per week. And, but it like in the stories is where I'm getting all my conversations. Oh man, you can stop talking. I was going to have you talk in, make a good, you know, thing oh. to go on my stories, but it's Oh, okay. sorry. Do you want me to keep talking? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What would you like me to talk about? <laughs> dance, monkey, dance, right? <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, all right, cool. So, all right, any more questions about Instagram? I really want to drive into, unless you don't want to. Uh, if you don't want to talk about YouTube, we don't have to. Um, you Put in the comment section, YouTube, no YouTube. Uh, any more questions about Instagram before we roll? Erica YouTube. Adams, I can see your face. So I'm going to ask you, you got any questions? I do have a question, but Good. I was responding yes for YouTube. Okay. Um, so I guess, and you may get into this, but um, like I do YouTube and I'm trying to start back on Instagram. Um, so for you, for you to, in terms of your ideal client, like on my YouTube, it's more like relocation and new construction is like having those two different, um, I guess, niches, like two, should I narrow it down to one? Um, I, I will definitely talk about yeah. that as we transition, because my big mistake was I tried doing what I was doing on Instagram. Cause I didn't want to start YouTube. I was like, I just need to do one thing and figure out how to do it well. And then I will try a second thing. Cause you know, for a while I was like, okay, I'll do LinkedIn and this and that and TikTok And it, and I was trying to take all my stuff and put it everywhere. And I was just like, I can't do this. So um, I learned the mistake was that I was trying to take exactly what I was doing on Instagram and transferring it to YouTube. And that did not work at all. <laughs> so good segue <laughs> that we can turn into Jeremy, if you have other questions for me, if you want to transition to that. 
I think we have one more question oh. from Tom and then we can roll. No, Tom's good. Okay. All right. So um, I want to talk about your YouTube channel. So on YouTube, this is what I'm doing on my YouTube. And I want to just see if there's any uh, like kind of uh, crossover to what you're doing. So I focus on market update. So uh, mm -hmm. to Erica's question, I do market update videos, new construction, um, relocation. So what areas? Uh, and then I do like what's happening in Austin, right? Newsy stuff happening, like businesses or people coming, right? So those are the four like buckets of content that I work on. So what that means, like first Tuesday of the month is going to be market update. You know, next is going to be new construction, um, Newsy, and then you know, whatever I said my other one was. So I'm curious because you were kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall a little bit. Yeah. Uh, when we were texting and you changed and there was two videos you did that are getting actually getting you business. So as as you talk about that, I'll pull up your channel. Yeah. Um, so I like I said, I I had done that whole audit on Instagram with that blogger and I was like, OK, I know what I'm doing now. I'm just going to make longer versions of those videos and put it on YouTube because it just needs to be longer, a little more analytical. And so I started putting out like educational stuff that um, no one would be searching for. And that's what I was completely missing is that this is not social media. This is a search engine. So my like how to avoid a bad appraisal and like how to overcome this or how to move without moving twice. So like those kinds of things, no one's searching for stuff like that. Um, how to transition to your next home. Like that's too vague. Those are like short little things. Perfect for reels. Um, so what I did was I, I actually, um, I, I, the other mistake was I was also running ads because someone told me like run ads on your market updates and whatever. And I feel like that was killing my channel, like where it didn't really grow at all. So I kind of hold on a second. Say that one more time for all the people in the back that tell me I should be running ads. <laughs> okay. So I was running ads because I went, I went to a Tom Ferry event like a few years back and they were like, do ads. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do ads. And we're like, I just, I was putting out not great content, not searchable content, pumping out ads on it, doing market updates, parking, pumping out ads. I was also throwing listing videos in there and, and, you know, like putting ads on it. And, and so like, I was just lingering at like a hundred subscribers and, you know, I like maybe every other month I'd get like one or something, but it was like, I'm just like, I'm not doing anything. And then I kind of was like, it was costing money because Instagram was free. And I'm like, God, I'm like paying someone because I was like, I don't have time to edit long form videos. I've got like a VA helping me. And I was just like, this sucks. So I kind of quit doing it. Like it was very like, you know, sporadic or something, mostly like if I did a, a listing video or something and I was just like, this is awful. So I went to an event and Jason Pantana, so I will say it's coming from Jason Pantana, who's like a marketing guru. I sat down with him at a table and I was like, Jason, can I ask you a quick YouTube question? I was like, this is what my channel looks like. And here's what all is going on. In it. He goes, you got way too much, much stuff going on. And I was like, what are your thoughts on ads? He's like, you need to cut those out. And I was like, okay. And then he said, um, and, and then he said, I would do a separate channel that's just for ads for your listing videos. And I was like, okay. And I was kind of frustrated because I'm like, God, like I've been doing all this stuff. And I'm like, God. So basically what I did was I opened a new channel and it's just all for listing videos. It only has 36 subscribers. It is, yeah. and I tell my clients like, this is not my main YouTube channel. This is just for pumping out ads, but I'm going to get you like 5,000, 10,000 views for your home. And we are going to target all these areas and they're like, awesome. Okay. Um, and so, so real quick, real quick, yeah. <laughs> that the same thing Jason Pantana told you where he got that from you. <laughs> yeah. okay. Because I got so <laughs> frustrated with the Tom Fair organization telling everybody to pay for ads. If, yeah. Quick plug. If you do want to pay for ads, Next Friday, Will Draper is going to come on and we're actually going to talk how to actually do YouTube ads. So yeah. come on for that one uh, because there is a way to do YouTube ads. And the way you just said it, we've got we've got a really cool method to actually like how to do it correctly and get business using ads. But how you're doing it now is a much better approach, which is your uh, information videos, your here's what neighborhoods is all not okay. ad driven. And then your listings are ad driven. So, uh, and I'll pull that up in a second. So I just wasted going. a whole lot of money though, for like a year and something, not really knowing. Yeah. And I would even talk to my coach, my Tom Ferry coach. I'm like, I just want to give up on this. Maybe I should just go to TikTok. Maybe long form is not my thing. And I was so frustrated by it. And I'm just like, 
God is, but once I did that, I mean, it was, it was still, it took a while, but, um, basically I, I, I rebranded this and, um, I made it, I, I realized I need, I also did dumb stuff. Like there was one about Chicago pizza. Oh wait, that's the wrong channel. That's like, yeah, this oh, is I, I didn't even know this existed. I need to figure that out how to delete that. Where the heck is that's so old. Okay. So this isn't the ads one. Okay. No, I'm like, how is this still up there? <laughs> that's like from years ago. Um, that's funny. Yeah. I even did stuff like, like neighborhood, like highlight the local neighbor business. I was like going to pizza places and stuff like, just don't do any of that stuff. Like, so, um, the, my Austin home is the one where it's just my listings. And yeah. those are the ones I'm paying money on. If it, if it's one that doesn't have any views, it means I sold it before we even needed to, to run the ad spend yeah. on it. But otherwise, and my clients, I'll show them like, we got this many views, likes, here's the inquiries. We're getting that kind of stuff. Um, so I took the listings out. And then the next step is I redefined who my audience is for my organic channel, which is the one I'm actually getting leads on. And, um, I realized I need to go through that whole step I did for Instagram. I need to redo that one for my YouTube. And so for YouTube, I'm really just looking for a buyer that is moving to Austin. They're probably from somewhere else. They may be local, but there are people who are wanting to move out to the Austin Hill country, Lake Travis, Dripping Springs. And ideally they're probably looking for new construction homes because there's so much growth out there. So my buckets are like once a month, I will do a market update. I will talk about it though, from the perspective of a buyer, what is it like to, uh, to buy a home in Austin right now? And then kind of telling stories again, like client stories instead of just stats, but like, I will talk about the stats. Okay. Prices are going up. They're going down. Here's your bargaining power. You can get 5% off or whatever, but you won't believe what we're getting with new construction deals. One client got this, they got, you know, 10% off their closing costs paid for blah, 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 blah. I'm showing like examples of it. And so those definitely, um, people are watching and, and I'm trying to just make it helpful, like in layman's terms, just real simple. What is it like right now to buy? Um, and then the other ones where I'm actually getting business from are my neighborhood tours and builder reviews. And so what I've learned where I, I'm like, why is this taking off? I did one on Weston homes that, um, like is I've gotten multiple, um, clients from this one thing. I actually closed one that is in my neighborhood. So the one is, you just went right past it, the Weston homes right there, um, it doesn't have a ton of views. It has like 591 views, but I got like a bunch of comments on it and I've gotten like two active clients, one under contract, one that is going to go under contract this month. We're actively looking. And, um, I'm like, why is this one working? And my other stuff is not. And so my coach analyzed it with me. He's like, we need to dive into this one and figure out like what you did and where's your watch time going up and down and whatever. So, on this one, I'm talking about my personal experience of buying a Weston home. I just built one. And so I'm talking about what I liked and what you need to watch out for after my experience. And I've also sold others with different clients. So the negative is what helped. Because <laughs> um, in the past, I was doing these like neighborhood tours and I was thinking, well, I don't want to bash a neighborhood or like sound real negative. So I was like, 10 reasons to fall in love with this, nine reasons you'll love this neighborhood or like, and it was all like, at the end, looking back, I'm like, okay, this could have been a paid ad from the HOA. Like it, it almost sounds like too perfect. And so what I've learned on this one is I need to always, there's always a downside. Like even if it's a neighborhood, my own neighborhood that I love, there's always like things that people are not going to love about it. So I'm really trying to focus on like, okay, here's like the, the six things I absolutely love, but I'm also going to tell you about three reasons why a lot of clients don't want to live here. And I want you to watch and like, tell me at the end what you would decide, you know, that kind of thing. So on this, um, I talked about how we had a really bad experience with like the cleanup. They didn't do a good job, like deep cleaning and whatever. And like, we had to move in, it still wasn't clean. And now since I've, I'm going to have to update it, they've now like changed their policy on how they clean up the homes in the neighborhood because I made this video but I had several people like that were like, we want you to help us because like, you know, all the things that went wrong and like how to ask for it and stuff like that. Um, and, and the cool thing is like with these calls, I almost was like in shock the first time I got one of these calls, but the person was like, Hey, Shannon, um, 
I watched your video about Provence and Weston Homes and I, we want you to help us. And we've been already talking to the sales agent guy and uh, we, we figured out like two floor plans you like, but can you help us? And I'm like, sure. And um, so I was like, well, what are you looking at? Well, we're looking at this one or this one. And one was like two doors down from me. And I was like, are you available? Like, when are you available? We're available tomorrow morning. So I met them tomorrow morning. Like the next day we went out for like 30 minutes. We looked at that home. We went to that home. I had a long conversation with them about like the, the pros cons. And then we just walked right down to the sales center. I'm like, Preston, we the sales guy. I'm like, well, we want to make an offer on this home. He's like, amazing. And that was it. You know, just, and I'm like, I, I didn't even know these people hardly at all. I mean, they just, but they knew me. Um, they were not questioning me at all. They didn't question my buyer rep agreement. They didn't question like anything. They were like, we need you to help us. We are just scared. Like, we don't know. We've never bought a new home before, but we want you to help. Um, and you know, then, so I, I love this story yeah. because I created a video about Sweetwater. Oh. Um, and I had the same exact thing happen. These people were like, Hey, we flew in. We didn't think we needed a realtor. We walked into Sweetwater. We didn't know, like, can you guys meet us tomorrow? This was Friday. Yeah. Can you meet us tomorrow, Saturday? And Eileen was annoyed because she's like, Oh, you know, I've got stuff on Saturday. I'm like, just, uh, you know, cause you get all these people that come through and on yeah. YouTube and sometimes these leads aren't good leads and literally almost uh, what? $850,000 under contract, like the next yeah. day, she's like, wow, that was cool. I'm like, that was so, worth it. now we can enjoy next Saturday and go. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the point is, is that these videos that you're doing, where you're talking about the neighborhood and you're being honest about the neighborhood do drive Honestly. business. Yeah. yeah. That's what I learned is like, don't sugarcoat it. It's like the pros and the cons. And then it's like, people really want to know the cons. That's why they trust you is because you're not just like, oh, it's so great. It's a great time to buy. It's a great time to this. Not always like tell them the truth <laughs> about what's happening. My other one was 12 like things to be aware of when you buy a new home in Austin. And that one I think has like a, uh, like one point, like 1700 views on it. It's an older one, but like I get questions about that. I've picked up three buyers from that video. One is already under contract. Two will be working with me in October um, and then the Western one, the other cool one, as I got one, it's a one and a half million dollar lead that we will be, I like they, they're signed buyer rep agreements. And it was the kind of the same thing. They're like, we watched your video. We were going to buy a home in rough hollow with Weston, but we started like Googling it. We found your rough hollow video. We found your Weston video. We want you to work with us. And he was like, I've already talked to the sales agent. We already picked out the home. And I was getting a little nervous because I'm like, oh gosh, how deep in are they with the sales agent? Because sometimes the salespeople are like, no, you didn't have a realtor. So I asked him, I said, did you by chance talk, talk to the agent or let him know that you were going to be working with a realtor? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I hope you don't mind, but I, I dropped your name. Yes. And I was like, really? <laughs> okay. You know, so I'm like, they already told the agent that, you know, oh yeah, we're going to be working with her. And I'm like, okay, I don't even know them. But um, he's like, we just really like what you said and we need help. And, um, and, and so I'm just like, oh my God. Uh, but up until that point, like I said, I was not getting the business. So I think what's really working for me is the, the honesty of like, here's what's going, like, you need to watch out for this, like beware. Um, and then also up and coming neighborhoods, like the ones that are more established that have been here forever are not as attractive as the ones that have the new builds where people are probably like, should I buy a Weston home? Should I get an Ashton Woods home? Should I get this? Should I get that? If you have new construction, I would say lean into it because people are probably looking for reviews. They're looking for, you know, the is it good? Is it bad? What do you think of those neighborhoods? So that is absolutely what's working. And I'm leaning hardcore into that now. Um, I'll be dropping one today about Ashton Woods Homes. I'm going to film this afternoon in another community. And so my goal is to just start like every Friday afternoon, film a couple of these and then have like my next year kind of already laid out. I'm trying to do at least one full length video every single week consistently. Um, but that's what I'm doing is I'm just doubling down on those tours and reviews. 
I like that. Um, the conversation yesterday I had with uh, my friend in Gainesville, uh, Lindsay, she was like, do I put out two? Uh, she was doing two videos a week. Obviously, we just said that they weren't really aimed at an audience. Yeah. Um, she was doing two. She's like, there are five minute videos each. Should I just do like one 10 minute video uh, a, a, month, a week? And my advice was yes, but really make sure you're focusing on your client. And I like what you're doing. And I think this is super uh, like, Anybody can do this, right? Your content looks exactly kind of like how you are right now. You're talking about the neighborhood, but then you're where you are now, just sitting kind of in a static background. And then you're like doing B-roll um, of the neighborhood. So I like that you can do this from where you are, or you can actually go there and and do like film there. I think yeah. both ways are, are super easy. Uh, Matt Bogosian like literally put a suction that camera to his car and drove around the neighborhood and then just did a voiceover talking about the neighborhood. So yeah. you you don't have to make these super hard and like your videos aren't uh, over edited, right? Like some videos some people are like, oh, the editing has to be, you're, these videos aren't over edited. This is easy text. You're just like, let's see what you had right here. Uh, I mean, this is the Ken Burns edit and you're just showing a sheet, right? This is not super hard. I mean, if you want to do an editing class, you're going to do an edit class next week. But what's great about this is these videos, every, like my best performing videos that get me business are not the videos that had the most views. And so what I love about this is you're not doing a hundred thousand views of video you're doing you know 100 150 you're doing 500 views but it's getting business and i think this is where people get scared i don't have the big channel and you're getting i mean we're talking about a hundred thousand dollars in business once you tweaked your channel to do it the right way which is focused on neighborhoods focused on telling people what you need to hear right yeah. And it just started happening, which is why I'm excited about it. Cause like I said, it just like for like almost a year and something, I'm just like telling my coach, like, I'm going to go broke with this. Like, I can't do this. And, and he's just like, you got to like stick with it. It's the long game. Um, the reason I started doing some of the ones where I'm just in my little like background here is because I don't have the money to have, like, I didn't have the money on it. I was like, I'm not going to spend the money to have my like videographer go out and like do all these tours on site. So what I would do is like one tour of Provence, the neighborhood I live in. And then I would be like, okay, the pros and cons of Provence. And I would tell, I have a VA that is cheaper that, um, does like other editing. He, he does different stuff. He does our newsletters and different things. And I'd be like, take the B roll from this video. And I want you to just drop it in here. And so that is like more cheap, like cheaper. Or then I started doing what I call neighborhood mashup. So there's like a big neighborhood, Rough Hollow and another one, Sweetwater that are like yeah. right across from each other. So I was like, let's do Sweetwater versus Rough Hollow. And I just Great tell one. them, I'm going to talk through my stuff here. I want you to pull B-roll from both of these videos. I already shot them and just like do a mashup. And and now that I have a Provence video, I'm doing an Ashton Woods. It's easy. I can just like, t I, I have my videographer. Um, we're going to go out and do headwaters today. And so I am going to be out there like doing the full neighborhood tour. And then I'm going to tell my videographer, I want you to shoot like the David Weekly home just, and I'm not even going to talk about it, but just give me that camera roll. I'm going to come back here and just do like David Weekly and, and it's whole brothers and I you know, like all that stuff, but I can just be sitting here as long as I've got some of the B roll, he's just going to mm -hmm. give it to me. My VA can just knock it out. Yeah. I like that. That's not made super difficult. Like you make it pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, how did you find your VA video slash videographer? Um, I had heard of, for a suggestion for, for, for the VA is um, he's from the Philippines. He, it was through a company called assistantly. Um, if anyone else has like recommendations for better places or something, I, I mean, I'm pretty happy with this guy, but I'm always like looking for other options too. But he, I, I like that. I only use him for 10 hours a week. I don't need like tons and tons of editing stuff. So it's like a pretty affordable. Um, and he does like, not just the, the editing of my videos, but he also like posts, he creates thumbnails. He helps us with our newsletter. He does like other little tasks for us. The other videographer, um, that was a hard one to find. I was just looking for specifically a real estate videographer. And, and I went through like several that were just awful. <laughs> I didn't have a great eye, but I finally found a guy I liked um, locally and I just started working with him. So he's like my main guy that does listing videos and the neighborhood tours. I do feel like it's important to at least get some professional video and drone, of course, for every listing, but also when I at least do the neighborhood tour, I think it looks a lot better to actually show the neighborhood. 
Um, but then once I have that, I can do all the other, like just me talking about it. Like what are the top three neighborhoods? And then my VA can just pull from those three videos and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. What you're doing isn't overcomplicated, but Tom likes to make it overcomplicated in his mind. So, um, <laughs> uh, speaking of complicated, like, do you, do you use stuff like tube buddy when you're worrying too. about how searchable something's going to be? What do you, what yeah. do you, yeah. What's your thought process? You, buddy, you would have to ask my husband how <laughs> that works. My husband helps me. I do bulk the bulk of our sales. I'm kind of like the face on camera. My husband does a lot of behind the scenes stuff too. Um, and he, we, he subscribed to TubeBuddy. And so he kind of figured it out how to do it, like to make the things more searchable, what tags to use and stuff. Um, and then he recorded how to do it and gave it to our VA. So our VA does that now. And so he, you know, kind of tweak everything. He puts like the little chapters in there where, you know, you can find the chapters. He puts an end screen, watch this video next. Or if I talk about, you know, I, I did a full length video on Provence, he'll drop a little card, like, you know, to like watch that video. So uh, my husband like recorded it. And then uh, now our VA does that as part of his job. Yeah. VidIQ is another one you can use. I honestly don't think that the tags and the SEO is the most important part. I know there's companies out there that try to sell you this, but um, I mean, I have to be honest. I don't think any of the SEO stuff truly matters. Uh, that's just me. But um, I do have a full course where we actually teach you how to use all that stuff. But um, I mean, use vidIQ. Just, I think people overthink the that part of it because the reality is, there are like four parts of the video, right? There's the content itself, the thumbnail, the title, and then the SEO, right? You need really three of those things to be to really shine. And if you make it the video, the or the content in the video, the thumbnail and the title, even if you had just the most amazing tags, but the content sucked and the and I don't mean content sucked like bad, like I'm telling you, take your camera and vlog just walk around and vlog and that will actually do better for you than you think. Um, but the thumbnail and the title, like her thumbnails are, they're bright. You can see them. You can see the tech, you can read the text that's on there, the titles she's worked on the titles, like she said. So I think those three things are going to be more important for you than the absolutely the tags. But I do think, you know, it is, it is one piece. So use vid IQ, use two buddy. Yeah. What are the questions we got? We got a couple of minutes left. So what questions? Frank, what do you got? Beth's AI, what do you got? <laughs> I have no questions. I think, you know, just, I, I think that the big things with Shannon, like I think it makes it seem easy that she does it easy, but I have to keep reminding myself that at one point it wasn't easy. That it's like a daily thing, little by little, little by little. And I think I focus too much on, you know, you know, putting video that looks perfect and amazing day one. Um, and then like, uh, in, like in person, I'm like fun and silly, but when I'm recording a video, I sound like, like an idiot. Like I sound really like a little, you know, very robotic. Um, so that's kind of where, I mean, that's my hang up and why I haven't kind of done a lot of, you know, or, or a whole bunch of, um, but you're going to get less robotic the more you get in front of camera. I mean, yeah. I'll give you a prime example. Eileen is not on camera at all ever. And so when we were at, uh, uh, not elite, but summit, I had, I kept putting her on camera and getting her in front of camera getting, and it was the same thing every time it's like that. What I do with my hands. And so by like the second day of just throwing the camera in her face, you could tell like that, uh, that wall she had put up, that nervousness was starting to go away. And you could tell like, she was like, as she was talking more right on camera, the ideas were coming. And so because the thing is why you've seen robotic sometimes might be that you don't know, you're not confident in what you're talking about. The moment mm -hmm. you start getting a little more confident about what you're talking about, you start looking like a real person again. Um, and mm -hmm. that's what I love about Shannon is she was a robot. I'm just kidding, Shannon. I was <laughs> when I started. Yeah, I was. Yeah. But you can't until you start having the conversation more on camera. You're not gonna. You're not gonna get better. And let it let it be crappy for a while. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Shannon spent a year doing it the wrong way you spend a month doing it the wrong way. Okay. And then you'll be up to Shannon's speed within a month. So, uh, 
any other questions? What do you and what else do you have, Shannon? Um, that was it. I mean, it was just, like I said, I'm, I'm hoping that out of this, you can avoid some of the struggles that I went through because like I said, I was at a breaking point where I was like, like just talking to my coach, like, I can't do this. I can't handle two, you know, things. And it's like, we just pushed through it and kept learning. And it's like, all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, like people are wanting to buy a house and they don't even know, like, I don't even know their last names. And they're like, we told our, you know, the sales agent, you're our agent. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like they are talking to me, like they know me. And I, now I'm like a full believer in YouTube and it's like, I'm like on a mission to just go down as, as many of this, you know, these videos as I can create, because I mean, how easy is it? And the amazing thing is you get to pick your neighborhood, you get to pick the area, um, you know, and that's where like having that niche of where you want to be. I mean, I literally have sold four homes in my neighborhood and I can like walk to the inspection and everything. I'm like, if I could do this all day long, how awesome is that? And so that's where I feel like the power is, is on Instagram and, um, YouTube, you can really hone in on like, I don't want to be driving all around town, chasing leads. It's like, these people are coming to you. And like, I saw this and I want to work with you right here. Um, so I, I'm a true believer now where like a year ago, I would just been like, it's awful. <laughs> so hopefully you can avoid my stress and just like take this and kind of launch you forward a, a bit faster than me. I mean, that's really the Christoph Chu st story that Tom Ferry always tells Christoph was, this is stupid. This is stupid. And Tom finally was like, do it for one more month. And then that in the next two weeks, suddenly he got a $2.3 million listing. And now he's just lights out in LA. Yeah. That's big goals to be trip, uh, Christoph Chu level. <laughs> so I'm getting there. I'm also really trying to get into the luxury market. I just got into real luxury. And so I am like strategically focusing on the higher end builders because I'm like, it is just as hard to sell a cheap new construction home as it is to sell the the big one on the hill. That's a million and a half, two million. So I'm really focusing in on those hill country views, luxury living, you know, some of those things as well. Um, and, and just, you know, why not up? And I already kind of honed in my location, but I'm like within my location, I want to up my price point and, and with social media, you can do it. And with YouTube for sure, it's like, you're going to get the people searching for that. This was good. Quick question. Um, yeah. So after hearing you talk about Instagram and YouTube, knowing that at the, what I'm hearing is like YouTube is more targeted clientele and stuff. And I'm, I am on both platforms. I've done deals from YouTube and I just restarted on Instagram, but I'm kind of wondering like, is it more realistic for, to make YouTube like your, your main or only lead source and just, not even waste time with Instagram and just go all into I, I I would I would say what is your bandwidth like I was I started with Instagram because I was using it personally and I liked it so I was like I'm gonna start with what I know and what's easy but I was like I do not have the bandwidth to figure out how to edit long form videos and fly a drone like I was like I need help so I hired that out so it could be that on Instagram um, you know, maybe set a short goal, like just post one video a week, post daily in your stories, your stories is where you get the money. Your stories is, could just be you taking a selfie and be like, you know, with text, here's what I'm doing today, whatever. Um, you know, I don't know what kind of content works for you on Instagram. You kind of have to experiment. It's possible. You might be able to take some of your YouTube content. There's a, a thing called munch that we've been using that take like basically breaks up your content into little short segments. We were putting those as YouTube shorts. Um, but you might be able to like use a short snippet on there, but I really look at Instagram as like, it's lighthearted. It's funny. It's raw. It's like not highly edited. So, I mean, I would keep it super short and simple and, um, and just, you know, if you're like, I'm overwhelmed by it, maybe just do stories, like maybe one post per week and just be in your stories at least like five times a week, you know, just something simple because that's where conversations have happen. Um, but I mean, but I mean, I feel like you can be successful anyway. I don't, I don't say you have to do both, but it's like you either need to get the help you need to do one or the other. If you're, if you're like, I can't do it myself or set very basic goals, just something you can be consistent at because consistency is key. So, um, you know, I would, I would just kind of think through that and, you know, cause I do see both could be lead sources, but, uh, you just have to figure out what, what you're able to handle and where you need the help. Thank you. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I am, I moved 
couple of years ago. So I, I'm trying to go into a new market, but I still have a lot of clients in my old market, which are like 30 minutes away. Okay. Can I, can I still work both markets or should I have two YouTube channels, one for each market? Or what do you recommend if they're two completely different markets? 30 minutes is like, like nothing in Texas, I'm like <laughs> 20 minutes to get to like anywhere. Um, I would say, I mean, if that's a good lead source, are you not going to sell it or buy it all in there? Or like, I mean, it to me is a good referral source for sure. If you want to like have a partner that you refer business to. So I don't know that I would completely drop the other market. I would, I would, I mean, if you got a good base there, I mean, if nothing else, that's good referral money. Um, but I mean, if they're close enough, you might say this and this, like, I mean, sometimes we have like the Austin round rock area or the Austin Lakeway or whatever. Um, you know, I, I just, I don't know enough about your markets, but I would definitely not lose the one that you've been making money on. Oh yeah. That's, that's where I got most of my money. I haven't, I I'm starting to get into the other one, but I haven't, but it's okay to yeah. use, do, to do both. That's what I'm ruining yeah. right now, but I just, okay, good. Thank yeah, you. I mean, if you think about it, there's a lot of realtors that that just do the state and then refer off business all over the state. So yeah, I would exactly what Shannon said. Oh, okay. Thank all you. right, Shannon, thank you so much. We got to right. roll. We're way past uh, okay. ten o'clock. So um, if you, I put Shannon's thank IG you. right there. If you want to reach out, ask her any more questions. I'm sure she'd love to answer questions. Um, I appreciate you coming on, Shannon. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll see everybody next week.